الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى عليه وصحبه وسلم أما بعد هبة في الله A question was asked Can you please answer this question I want to know the ruling on doing to wassel through the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم while he is while he's in his grave If it's shirk then why have the majority of scholars said it is allowed How have the scholars of Egypt Turkey Syria Lebanon and other countries all agreed upon that it's not shirk and that it's allowed Are they all kufar? And was Ibn Taymiyyah the first one to prohibit this? Did Ahmed ibn Hanbal and the rest of the madhabs allow to make tawassal through the Prophet ﷺ? Please answer this question. I'm really confused. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us with ilm al nafi raskan tayyib wa amlan mutaqabbilan. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us with the sawab. And we'll do what... I don't really consider it as justice to this issue because it really is in depth, but we're going to be as brief and quick as possible just to get us uh, a good, uh, to, to deal with your question. First and foremost, we have to understand tawassal. What are we talking about when we're tawassal? Huwa taqarrab ilallahi ta'ala bima shara'ahu fi kitabihi wa ala lisan rasulihi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam min al-wajibat wal mustahabbat. Taib, meaning, tawassal ahabat fillah. It is seeking to draw near to Allah, tabarak wa ta'ala. It's seeking to draw near to Allah, the Almighty, with those things which He has legislated and in His book, meaning the Quran, and on the tongue of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. And from those things which are obligatory or they are recommended. Meaning recommended deeds of uh, of worship and wajib deeds of worship through salat, zakat, uh, uh, charity, things like this, and dua. Those things are things which are, uh, some of them are obligatory, some of them are, uh, are mustahabbat. So those are ways that we come closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And in regards to this, There are three different ways that are mishru'ah, meaning that are legislated ways to uh, make tawassal. The first way is tawassal bi asma'i lahi ta'ala al-husna wa sifatuhu al-uliya. The first way is to make tawassal, to seek to draw nearer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by His divine names and attributes. Okay, supplicating to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ya Hayyul Ya Qayyum, bi rahmatika istagayth, islah li shani kulli, you know, O uh, Al Hayy, the ever living uh, Al Qayyum, you know, uh, you know, who has the qudra and the ability over everything and all his divine uh, attributes return to them, that, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, his attributes are divine. By your mercy, I seek your assistance. So here, the, the believer is making tawassal ila Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through dua and through his divine names and attributes. Saying, bi rahmatika astagayth, aslah hishani kulli, you know, rectify all of my affairs. So again, this is without any inter- intermediaries and this is directly to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that is through his divine names and attributes. The second way to make tawassal ahabat fillah is tawassal bi a'mala saliha by doing righteous deeds. So seeking to draw nearer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as is mentioned in the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, about the one who was in the cave, that uh, the, the, the rocks, they descended and blocked the, the way of the cave, uh, the three in the cave. And one of them he mentioned, uh, you know, he said, if I did so and so, you know, oh Allah, one of the examples there is that he supplicated to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, okay, and he mentioned that he rejected a woman who was beautiful, who was basically laying before him. And she said, fear Allah. Do not, you know, basically take my virginity in an unlawful way. And no, to so would have You know, don't get depth into picturing that image. But, but the point is, you know, that takes iman to, to have that before you, what you desire, ready for you. And then they tell you to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And, and the person said, Oh Allah, if I left that strictly for your sake, then please, you know, get us out of this situation. So the rock moved. Some. And, and then the other three. That is tawassal bi'amala salih. That is seeking to draw nearer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through righteous 
deeds. And the third way of tawassal in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is tawassal bi dua salihin, al ahya al hadirin. Okay? Seeking to draw near to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Th uh, through the righteous, okay, like you're, you're, you're saying, and all these scholars you mentioned that are, are saying it in modern day uh, times or what have you. Uh, Bi dua salihin ahya al hadirin. Meaning, those righteous, uh, the righteous that are living and they're present. So, for example, I can't say, uh, you know, somebody who I think is, is a righteous person and they're living in, I'm right now in, in Saudi Arabia and I'm thinking of a righteous person that I know in Seattle that is great imam and he's so, you know, good and stuff. And I say, you know, I'm trying to seek to draw near to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by making dua to him or making dua asking him without without asking meaning you know i without him being present and without using a telephone or whatsapp or or some messaging service and i just say you know sheikh so and so or uh imam so and so please make dua for me or please carry my dua to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because i believe you are you know make dua for me on on my behalf to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you know because you're one of the righteous ones you know not supplicating to him but asking him now the point being he is not present so he's not in my immediate vicinity so he can't hear he can't do anything about it. He can't supplicate for me because he doesn't know that I, I'm asking him to supplicate. So in this situation, this would be a type of shirk. Okay, this would be a type of shirk because he has no ability and you are, you are aware that he has no ability and you are now asking of him to supplicate for you knowing he can't even hear you or believing that he can hear you when it is mustahil, it is not possible that he can hear you when he's on the other side of the planet, okay? And the other condition is ah, yeah. So if you, which is more extreme and falls into shirk al-akbar, that you're seeking from the dead. So you're going to the grave or you might not even go to the grave. You just say, oh, you're looking at this picture of your dead sheikh and you say, you know, sheikh, please, you know, enter me into paradise, or please ask Allah, or by you, please get me to paradise. You know, so you're seeking this from your dead sheikh. And there are some details with regards to when it becomes, when it's a bid'ah, and when it is shirk, okay? One of the issues when it regards to bid'ah is when you make tawassal, for example, bijah, so you're not actually supplicating to that individual that's dead, supplicating to the Prophet, alayhi salatu uh, uh, You're not supplicating to him, but you're saying to Allah, you're supplicating to Allah, Oh Allah, by the status of your Prophet. Oh Allah, by the status of the righteous. So regardless of whether it is a righteous individual or even the Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wasallam, this is a bid'ah. It's something ghayr mishru'ah. It's not legislated. It's not permissible. Okay? Now, you said in your question, you mentioned, you said, uh, if it is shirk, and I said that the situation that you're describing, it sounds, is not shirk. That they're not supplicating. They're not saying it's okay to supplicate to the people who are dead. Uh, supplicate to them, but by their status. Okay? So, we just mentioned that that's a bid'ah. Okay? But you're telling me that the majority of scholars... Okay, I don't know what majority this is, but perhaps because there's a lot of bid'ah in the ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam during this time, but bid'ah is not accepted. Okay, so you said the ones of Egypt, Turkey, Syria, Lebanon, and other countries. I don't know any scholars of Ahl Sunnah who, who mentioned this, and let's put that aside though, because we know that the majority is not something that is mu'tabir in the shar. That the majority is not something which is necessarily considered as uh, when making rulings in the shadow. We don't say, well, now the majority of the ummah says it's okay to supplicate to the dead. It's now okay. Now, look at now. You will find that in the West and probably somewhat in the East, you'll find a lot of scholars, in quotes, and, and imams and what have you, saying it's okay to get at least one house in riba. And then they try to make, uh, you know, as evidence go back to, some fiqh principles 
and even going back to the madhab of Imam Abu Hanifa, rahmatullahi alayhi rahmatin wasiya. And so they try to use some, some things from the usul of that madhab and then from the qawaid uh, fiqhiyya and qawaid usul uh, fiqh to say that it's okay. So even if there's many imams that are now saying it's okay to get to use riba to get a house and redefining what is a necessity in order to get a house, that doesn't make it jayas, it doesn't make it permissible. So what I wanna establish for you, related to this issue and related to any issue you come up with, no matter who is saying it, whether it's Sheikh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah or other than him, or whether it's all these majority that you just mentioned, the asl of ibadah is a hadr. The origin of worship in Islam, write this qaida down, please. The origin of worship in Islam is that it is not permissible. The origin of any act of worship is that it's not permissible. Okay? Let me finish. Illa, except what comes from the Book of Allah. It's authenticated by the Book of Allah, and that's what lets us know it's mature, like Salat. Sunnah the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the Sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Okay, that is our Masdar Talaqi Al Ilm. That is where we get the origin of taking knowledge and understanding what is ibadah. That it has to be from the Prophet. It has to be from Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, mentioned in the Quran. And in accordance with the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu if it is not something the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi did, especially regarding worship, aqidah and things like this, throw it away. It's not permissible. Okay? Now, what's the other qaida I want you to write down? The asl of uh, asl al-libas or asl al-mu'amalat al-ibaha illa Okay, the same same uh, thing as we mentioned, ibadah. Right. The origin of mu'amalat, of doing other uh, uh, of transactions and things like this, is everything is lawful. Isn't that beautiful? Food, for example, when you ask about McDonald's, they say, oh, in America, can we eat McDonald's? Can we do this? The asl, the origin, is that it's all okay. Now let's give you the exception. Except unless it is prohibited by the Qur'an and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wasallam and then you can say the ijma of the, uh, the ulama because there are many new issues they take study and then the scholars look at it in accordance with the Qur'an and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to deduce a ruling is it halal or is it haram because maybe it contradicts you know they're looking at the Qur'an and the Sunnah not their desires and not because they say it feels good now when we look at this issue of tawassal ask yourself did the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam say did he uh, say by the status of Jesus Alayhi Salatu Wasallam who came for him or the status of Ibrahim Alayhi Salatu Wasallam or Ismail or Ishaq or Yaqub or Daud or any of the Prophets Alayhim Afdal Salatu Wasallam did the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam supplicate to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala and say by their status did he do that? The answer is no. Did the Sahaba to Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam جمعين, did they do that after the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did they ask the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam after his death Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam after he was in the grave because he was in the grave if you read Bukhari if you you know read the authentic sources the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam died Alayhi Salatu Wasallam okay did the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'in, did they supplicate to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam? No. Did they supplicate by the jah and the status of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam after he died? No. And we have an athar of Umar radiallahu ta'ala an, which mentions uh, that the ahl uh, bid'ah they try to use is, uh, uh, to authenticate this practice and say it was the, the about uh, uh, in regards to making istisqa with uh, Ibn Abbas or I believe it's Ibn Abbas تلعنهما, that they say during the time of the Prophet وسلم, we used to do it you know ask the Prophet وسلم, to, to, to uh, you know ask Allah to make it rain and after he died Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam who was in his grave we asked uh, we said by Ibn Abbas you know his, his status because he was alive Okay, but they use it to say that it's okay to ask by the uh, the status of the dead 
regardless of whether that's the Prophet وسلم, or the righteous. But you have no delil from that. We don't have it from the Kitab. We don't have it from the Sunnah. We don't have it from the uh, Salaf. We don't know that from the uh, the Sahaba. Ta'ala, and we don't know that from the Tabi'een. We don't know that from the Itiba'i Tabi'een. So you have to ask those people that it, the question isn't for those, you know, the people who say that this is okay. What's your proof that it's not? No. You should always ask when it comes to worship, what is your proof for this worship? Not what is your proof that this worship is not permissible. That's never, that's bil aks. And that's something I want you to take and write that down. And that will, de that will help you distinguish many principles uh, and, and understanding many issues in the religion. We ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Anything I said that was correct is from Allah Azza wa Jal. Anything I said that was incorrect was from myself and the shaitan. Wa sallallahu alayhi ala nabiyyana Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.